Hello, dear dear friends. Welcome to my spiritual science series. And uh, today we are uh, being on the uh, New Testament uh, series. And my topic today is a twist in Jesus' spiritual identity. It seems as an uh, a, a misaligned identity of Jesus. Because the issue was with the coming in of the New Testament actually came with a new dispensation that changes the old dispensation of the New Testament of the Jewish leader of the Jewish tradition that believe in the first five book of the Old Testament, which is the Torah that believed to be written all by Moses. So their whole life was centered around what Moses taught them. So when Jesus showed up in the street of Jerusalem to teach the, the good news of Jesus, uh, of, of, his, of God, when he started as a child in the temple, going then when he became big and started going to various neighborhood teaching love, love and justice for all, you know, and then loving your neighbor as yourself, or uh, or uh, 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 being your brother's keeper, you know, and 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 and, and keeping family unit together in prayers, all of this value. And it was only being interpreted by then and what the Old Testament people wanted for the people to just believe in what they taught them. Whereas Jesus came and, and made it wide enough for everybody to be able to understand what God said in the scripture and how we're supposed to live to, uh, together, you know, as you know, with one another. So so this kind of a uh, system that, 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 that Jesus brought, brought about, talk about uh, 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 institutional religion. So the institutional religion uh, belief system, uh, you know, that, that operates systematically, you know, and establish. So it seems a doctrine. The Methodists, how to do the worship, that worship order, Baptist worship order. Then you go to the Pentecostal way of worship, the worship order, how they do it. That's what they call institutional or systematic uh, 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 relation and, 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 and procedure. So that's how where Jesus got himself caught up into uh, 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 the trap, the, the religious uh, uh, twist that happened when he came and began to feed. So where did Jesus uh, find himself, you know, and Jesus' relationship with his people, the Jewish people, because he was a Jew. So there where the problem came from. The worship, he came with a new dispensation of, 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 of doing the Bible, the scripture, teaching different messages, you know, as compared to what they were teaching to the people. So Jesus came to change that, and they wasn't comfortable with that. So the problem started. They started to misrepresent Jesus. They tried to discourage the people. They started to persecute people who will follow him. All of these things started to happen with Jesus uh, when he came in, and you know, that caused the problem. So if you go into Judaism, it's based on the first five books of the, of the Bible that's called the Torah. So that's different message. The Moses' law, the Ten Commandment, portion of the Ten Commandment, this day, the, the day of the Sabbath, all of those things. Then in the New Testament, Jesus started bringing about the parable of the Samaritan woman at, at Jacob well. Then he talked about the uh, 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 the uh, the 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 uh, the Samaritan man that saved the man in Luke chapter ten, the story of. Of, 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 of the, 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 the high priest and the Levi, you know, and, and then the, uh, the Samaritan man who saved this man, who all the other, uh, 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 what is it, preachers or bishops and whatever you could think came and passed over this man. And Jesus was just trying to teach how we're supposed to live, how we're supposed to be able to, to, to embrace one another with love. And how we're supposed to have a uh, Bible studies in the home, teach the children to know the scripture, to know God. Because when you know God and believe in what the Bible says, it, it gives you that, 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 that spiritual value of, of integrity to live and away from sin and seek salvation from God. 
So that was it was all about. So to conclude today, uh, we we look at a story that took place in John chapter four verse two, uh, four to forty two verse four to forty two. So this story in John four verse four to forty two is part of the model of the cross culture of ministry or the cross culture belief in interaction. So in that. At this time, Jesus and his disciples was traveling, and they decided to stop to this well. And then what he did was because Jesus foresaw what was going to happen, he did not want the, the, the disciples interfering with that thing that was going to happen at that point. So what he did, he sent them in town. So why he sent them in town? The Samaritan woman came to draw the water. And then Jesus asked her for a drink of water. She said, but you are a Jew, I am a Samaritan woman. I'm a Gentile. There's no dealing between, oh, why are you asking me for a drink of water? Because Jews and Gentiles do not mix. So Jesus said, the water I'm, I'm asking about is not the water that you're thinking about. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a living water, the water that will give you life. So she got confused, so she began to so a little question in your mind. Is this a Messiah that we heard our forefather telling us about? It must be. So then Jesus continued and Jesus asked her, said, where is your husband? Say, oh, my husband in time. No, Jesus said, you're all the husbands. You got five husbands. Then she checked. She came to us and said, wow. So when the interaction said, who are you? Are you the son of David? So our forefather told us long time ago about a Messiah that will come. You must be the one. Because this is strange. That no ordinary person can just look at you and tell you all about you. Because she she you know she was living double life, right? She had a husband, but then she used to go hustle, a uh, promiscuous life that she was living. And then Jesus you know, encountered her and begin to tell her all of this story. But then the interesting part is that she started to think. Because long ago, in the Old Testament, the prophets prophesied about the coming Messiah. So when Jesus told her all about herself, she dropped a bucket, the draw bucket, like draw the water from the well with, and ran in the town. And suddenly people come and see this man. The man who had told me everything that I had done. But while she was in the town spreading the, Jesus, the message, and, and, and that this Messiah, this man must be the Messiah that they heard about, the disciples returned. But before then, when the disciples were coming, they said to ask, but what is he doing with that woman? Because the disciples was all the same Jewish Pharisees that Jesus uh, recruited. What is he doing with her? I wonder what he think. And think about it. Is he hating on her? That's what I think. That's why he thought, because the, the way they asked the question, why does he want her? But I think the main thing was the tradition at the time that the Jews and the Gentiles could not talk to one another. So that the lady went preaching. So when Jesus came, Jesus started telling them that, you know, I, the woman did not understand the water that I was asking her for. I was asking for, her for, the, for the living water. That's what I thought, but she didn't understand. So while they're doing it, then everybody begin to converge from the time to come and see this man. The man who had told me everything that I have done. So that's where that song coming from. Come and see the man. Jesus the man. Come and see the man. Jesus the man. Come and see the man. Jesus the man. The man who told me everything that I have done. So that's where that song coming from. So today, I just want to encourage all preachers, when you start to preach the gospel, it's not an easy thing. People will come after you, especially when you're not preaching messages that, that correlate with the religious thoughts, how they look at it, what they want to hear in it. It's like today, now we have prosperity gospel spreading all over the world. That's the kind of gospel people want to know that, oh, I want to hear that the man tell me by tomorrow I'll buy a new car, I'll be able to get a house, and all of these things, they kind of, so yes, it's true that you can get those things, but it takes a process. 
You cannot get anything overnight. You have to work for it. You got to pray, fast and pray, and believe that God can give you those things. So, you know, but it's, it's, it's all uh, incorporated into the the, 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 the the worship system. What you believe, it, it's all about having faith in God and what you're asking him for to believe that God will give it to you and not the pastor. Because sometimes you see the pastor with all the nice guy, he look nice and all that kind of thing. It's not happening overnight. It's your own uh, offering that you're giving him. That what they pay some churches, got organized churches, they pay that pastor well. They gave them place to stay the bar car for them. But others, they, they control all the money that come, all the offering and everything. They disperse the cash. They do everything. So they got everything, got a private jet and all the other stuff. So you cannot get a private jet because private jet 14, 15, 20 million dollars for a jet. You know, so it's just not a thing that you can get overnight. So just imagine. So I just stopped by this morning uh, to tell you the challenges that Jesus had when he came. And the reason why they saw him because he brought different kind of message. He was preaching the message that they wasn't used to. They were misleading the people. And Jesus came to put everything straight, to make everything right. He didn't only give her a life, but he gave her abundant life by teaching the real gospel of God so that we can know how to live with one another. I want to thank you today. May God bless you today and be with you and guard you in everything that you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a blessed day. Thank you.